But when it comes to sabr, sabr means patience. It also refers to restraint. Let me take a moment to explain to you the three categories of sabr. Sabr means that patience. Normally we just use the term patience. But when you have to fulfill the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the strength that is required to do it is also known as sabr. I am bearing sabr because I need to fulfill the laws of Allah. There are two major types of laws. One is the do's and the other the don'ts. So for the do's, I need sabr to do them. To get up early morning to read Salatul Fajr, subhanallah, it's not a joke. Get used to it. It becomes your habit. You will open your eye automatically at the time of Salah because you're used to it. Your body has this computer that is amazing. <laughs> That's a gift of Allah. But if you're a person who sleeps any time, any day, you're not worried about it, it's going to be really tough. You put one clock, two clocks, three clocks, and each one of them you press snooze, snooze, snooze. And still, when you snooze, you lose. So you've lost your Salatul Fajr. That's what happened. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. But you need the strength to fulfill this instruction of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is known as a sabru ala ta'a. To bear patience regarding the obedience of Allah. And then you need a different type of restraint, which is also included in the meaning of sabr. Restraint to abstain from the prohibitions of Allah, the don'ts. I see something, I want to do it, but it's in the displeasure of Allah. So I say, no, I will stay away from it. To stay away from it, you need power, you need restraint, you need sabr. And the third type of sabr is patience that is required to accept the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has destined something for you, we know it is predestined. When that happens, we have to surrender to the decree of Allah. Allah took the life away of someone close to you. It has to happen. He told you he will do that in the Quran. He said it, I'm going to do this. That's what he said. So Allah will do it. We have to lose our loved ones because we have to go. Don't worry. If you do good deeds, Allah says, وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَاتَّبَعَتْهُمْ ذُرِّيَّتُهُمْ بِإِيمَانٍ أَلْحَقُنَا بِهِمْ ذُرِّيَّتَهُمْ Allah gives good news to those whose family members follow up in that goodness. Allah says, we will gather you together later on. Don't worry, you're going to meet each other. You can gather in paradise. The condition is you need to do good deeds. You need to try. You need to believe and you need to, you know, there are people sometimes they don't believe in the hereafter. I remember once I was sitting on an aircraft and I was sitting next to someone and I meet a lot of interesting people, mashallah, tabarakallah. And this brother tells me, you know what? You guys are crazy. I said, what do you mean? You don't even know me. You're calling me crazy. He says, you believe that we're going to hell. I said, sorry, what religion do you belong to? He says, I'm an atheist. I said, you know, with all due respect, obviously we have a live and let live policy and mashallah, we, we will coexist by all means. But I want to tell you, why are you worried about it when you don't even believe in the hereafter? Me, he was quiet. I said, okay, have you thought about it? If you are worried about what I've said about the hereafter when you don't even believe in it, it means deep down, perhaps there is something in you that is telling you, hey, what if this guy is telling the truth? Subhanallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us and guide us. May Allah open our doors. Like I say, wallahi, my brothers and sisters, we have a live and let live policy. We will coexist. We will have our differences. We have to have the differences. These differences must not make us become violent. They must not make us spread hate. They must rather make us engage one another in positive discussion so that we can be enlightened regarding the decisions we have made in our lives. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the ability to make the best decisions based on sound knowledge. So I was speaking about the light of the sun and the light of the moon and the fact that this one is called Diya and that one is called Noor. So Allah says with the Salah, you achieve the Noor and with the Sabr, you achieve the Diya. Diya is like the sun. When I need to abstain from something, 
there is a bit of an energy required. It's a little bit of heat. I see something I really love, I really like, but there is a certain power that is required for me to stay away. Whereas when it comes to salah, that is a very positive energy. I just say Allahu Akbar and I'm so calm. I'm so relaxed, subhanAllah. Imagine going onto the ground and putting your forehead or forehead, however you want to pronounce it, putting it onto the ground and saying, Oh my maker, you are the highest. You are the greatest. Oh, you who made me, I declare your praise and I declare that you are the highest. Subhana Rabbi Al-A'la. That's what the Muslims say. When they go down into prostration, it is a position filled with humility between you and your maker, direct. Imagine you go down and you are picturing this to say, I'm in front of my maker on my, you know, prostration on all seven bones. And I'm there saying, oh, my maker, you are the highest. That is such a beautiful feeling. This is why the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, as salah to nur. Salah is nur. It has in it beauty. And then this verse comes to be understood. Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu sta'inu bis sabri was salaam inna Allah ma'as sabirin. Verse number 153 of Surah Al-Baqarah. Allah says, O you who believe, seek assistance, seek help. Help regarding what? Your issues, your problems, whatever you have. The assistance you will get will be through two things. Two major things, sabr and salah. Bear patience and I've explained to you the three aspects of it. And fulfill your prayer. Why fulfill your prayer? You develop your link with Allah. You develop your link with your maker. I tell you, the more patient you are regarding abstaining from prohibitions, the more sweetness you derive from this beautiful salah. When a person has stayed away from prohibitions, he will definitely or she will definitely be able to achieve a beautiful sweetness and a taste of that prayer such that he or she will want to pray every time and more than just the obligatory prayer, even that which is over and above the obligation. Voluntary. <laughs>